Y'all really thought I was kidding on Instagram apparently when I said that I was going to put a two-stroke KTM motor into a BMW Power Wheels. As you saw two weeks ago, I have the 50 and I have the Power Wheels and I took basic dimensions on everything and announced what I planned on doing. Since I made that initial announcement two weeks ago, parts have started to roll in. I have my rear wheels and tires that came in. They're basic go-kart rear wheels and tires. They have brand new Dunlop slicks on them. And I got my drive hubs for that as well. These are the hubs that came with the wheels. They are standard inch and a quarter bore go-kart hubs. They came with quarter 28 hardware, like the one on the left has. And they are also drilled here for 5 16 24, which is what I put on the one in the right side. I had to go buy this hardware and I'll show you why. With the quarter 28 hardware that was supplied, if you put the hub into the wheel, you can wiggle back and forth. With the 5 16 hardware, you can go in here. It doesn't wiggle nearly as much. There's not nearly as much play. That is going to help these wheels and the bolt circle on the wheels last a lot longer should something slip and start moving. The first thing I need to do is measure how wide the body is, figure out where they're going to sit, measure the back spacing from the back side of the rim to the back side of the hub, plus the length of the hub, and that'll give me a rough length of how long the rear axle needs to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the back spacing of one of the rear wheels. I know this is the back side because the valve stem is on the other side of it. So all I'm going to do is take this metal scale and take a shorter scale. The hub is down in here as you can see. From the edge of the lip to the face of the hub is three inches and three sixteenths. Next I'm going to take the hub and I have dial calipers. When I measure face to face with the dial calipers I get one and eight 12, 1 and 8, 10 roughly. An inch and 8, 12 would be an inch and 13 sixteenths. 3 inches and 3 sixteenths times both sides is going to be 6 and 3 eighths. And then an inch and 13 sixteenths times both hubs is going to be 3 and 5 eighths. So together, that's going to be 10 inches of shafting that I need to clear the back spacing and the hubs. Plus, the car is 25 five inches wide at the fenders so that's going to be 35 inches total the wheel with the slick on it is 10 and a quarter wide i did some thinking and this is what i'm going to do i'm going to push the slicks about halfway in under the fender arches because if it sticks the whole way out it looks absolutely ridiculous and i will show you if i don't push them halfway inside the fender arches this is what it looks like in the rear and that is absolutely ridiculous looking. But if I push them about halfway in, this is about what it looks like from the front. And I think it's going to slide a lot easier the narrower it is, even though the wheelbase is going to be fairly short. To make this easy, we already figured out I need 10 inches to clear the hubs in the back spacing and 25 between fender arches gives us 35 inches total. So to make this easy, you just subtract 10 and a quarter, which would be half the total width of the wheels in the rear. Leaves us at 24 and three quarter inches. That being said, let's jump into the shop and make it happen.
was a lot louder filming in the shop than I had initially anticipated. So I just stuck to using the GoPro for some time-lapse stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any questions or want any more in-depth videos or explanations of anything that I did, leave a comment below and I can make that happen sometime in the near future. There's definitely going to be a lot more machining and welding and fabrication and stuff for this project. So there will be more opportunities for that. Now that I'm back at home in my garage, I can explain this to you and show it to you a little easier. The shaft itself is made out of turn ground and polished steel. It is inch and a quarter diameter. I went back and forth on shaft diameter and material a couple times. I was going to use inch and a half aluminum and just turn the ends down to inch and a quarter to fit the hubs and the bearings. I wanted to use aluminum because it's a little lighter. I only weigh about 150 pounds, but if anybody else were to ride this thing, I wasn't sure if we would end up bending the axle. I didn't want to wear out the bearings prematurely. All of this is a whole experiment and a half because I am literally making things up as I go. But that's okay because that is how I learn the best. And I don't know, maybe you'll learn something too. I cut the shaft about an eighth inch long and then I faced it off on the lathe and then I filed a small chamfer on it to help the hubs go on a little easier. It comes out to like 1.248 diameter, about two thousandths small from a quarter inch. So because it was TGP, I did not need to do anything to the outside diameter of the material. When I put it up in the mill, I found my zero and then I programmed this quarter inch wide keyway, which is two inches long from from the face to the center of the radius. And the keyway is 138 thousandths deep from the top of the radius of the TGP. The keys are just quarter inch stainless steel key stock. They drop right in, they slide. The next part was a bit of a guess on my part, and we'll see if my guess works out. The bearings for this are not here yet. I know that the bore is inch and a quarter, but when you slide an axle or a shaft through the bearing, you need to be able to lock the bearing to something. So there is a small set screw that comes in through the diameter of the bearing, and you can screw that down to the shaft. Well, that tends to work best if you have a flat to seat it to. So while I had this set up to put the keyways in it, I just went down 15 thousandths, about a 64th of an inch, and I ran the tool the entire length of the shaft. This made it simple because then I could flip the shaft, put that flat against the vice jaws, and then I knew this one was 90 degrees to here. The bearings generally have two set screws, but my guess was that they will be 90 degrees from one another. The bearing supplier did not give me that information when I bought the bearing. Sometimes they're 90 degrees apart, sometimes they're 120 degrees apart. That's okay, I can recut that later. If it works, great, but you'll have to stay tuned to find out. The key is already in the keyway. You're going to want to line that up with the internal keyway way that's cut in the hub and because this is split right through here it's tapped on this side you tighten this and it will draw that together and that is what's going to cinch it up on the shaft I just tapped it until the faces are relatively flush just snug it up I'm not torquing anything to spec right now. I just want to make sure everything lines up. You just go and repeat that on both ends of the shaft and now you have your axle assembled. The next step is putting the wheels on. I bolted both sides on, just snugged everything up by hand. There she is. Much like I said when I did the measurements to tuck half of each tire inside the body, it was going to be a 24 and 3 quarter inch long axle. I still need to build the plates that are going to serve as the tensioner for the chain. I still need to figure out how I'm going to attach the sprocket and the rear brakes. Shouldn't be that big of an issue, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I still need to figure out how we're building the rest of the tube chassis and locating the engine in the front above the steering. That's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. There is so much more to come with this. I'm so excited to see where it goes. If you wanna follow along on Facebook, or Instagram at Horsepower Pizza. There's a lot of photos and behind the scenes stuff posted on there. I'm going to be doing more E36 stuff, more 435 stuff coming soon. And there's another surprise that I haven't announced yet. So be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. If you liked it, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out, build it for you.